Today, most of the world's enterprise computing still happens on-premises. It hasn't moved to the cloud yet because the path forward is complex, daunting, and full of difficult decisions. Sometimes workloads remain on-premises due to compliance or operational concerns. So how do you modernize the infrastructure you have without jumping completely to the cloud? How do you bridge incompatible architectures while you transition? How do you maintain flexibility and avoid lock-in? Although there are many benefits to developing cloud-first or cloud-native applications and systems, many enterprises have complex needs that will involve some on-premises infrastructure working in conjunction with public cloud services provided by companies like Google Cloud. Before we go any further, though, let's make sure we're using a standard definition for the following terms. Private cloud, hybrid cloud, and multi-cloud. Private cloud is where an organization has virtualized servers in its own data centers to create its own private on-premises environment. This might be done when an organization has already made significant investments in its own infrastructure, or if for regulatory reasons, data needs to be kept on-premises. Hybrid cloud is when an organization is using some combination of on-premises or private cloud infrastructure and public cloud services. This is the situation many organizations are currently in. Some of their data and applications have been migrated to the cloud. Others remain on-premises and interconnects between the private and public clouds allow interoperability. Multi-cloud is where an organization is using multiple public cloud providers as part of its architecture. In this case, the organization needs flexibility and secure connectivity between the different networks involved. An organization might choose to use either hybrid cloud or multi-cloud if they want to incorporate specific elements of a public cloud in order to take advantage of the key strengths of that provider. For example, Many organizations see enormous benefits from Google's BigQuery data analytics tool, a serverless application that scales to multi-petabyte datasets, but may keep the core applications generating data that needs to be processed on-premises. When organizations are considering a move to a hybrid cloud or multi-cloud situation, they are often concerned about how easy it will be to move an application from one cloud to another. Google believes that being tied to a particular cloud shouldn't get in the way of you achieving your goals. Instead, Google believes in an open cloud where users have the rights to move their data as they choose. If organizations have the power to deliver their apps to different clouds while using a common development and operations approach, this will help them meet their business priorities and rapidly accelerate innovation. Open source, in the cloud preserves an organization's control over where they deploy their IT investments. Let's look at some examples. Because Google Cloud uses open APIs, Google services are compatible with open source services and products. This means you can take the code from, let's say, Google's Cloud Bigtable, a managed database, and use that code somewhere else. Because Google Cloud publishes key elements of its technology using open source licenses, customers can use products both on-premises and on multiple clouds. One example of an open source service you may have heard of is TensorFlow, an open source software library for machine learning developed inside Google. Another you may have heard of is Kubernetes, a system for automating application deployment scaling, and management using a concept known as containerization. Finally, Google Cloud has created Anthos, an open application modernization platform that enables you to modernize your existing applications, build new ones, and run them anywhere. It allows you to build an application once and run it wherever you want, on premises, on Google Cloud, on a different public cloud, this will help accelerate application development for your organization. These examples of open source solutions in the cloud enable businesses to leverage Google Cloud infrastructure and deploy applications using Google Cloud solutions on premises and or using another cloud provider. The reliability and resilience of the cloud infrastructure is critical to business operations and success. Now, another key component of a cloud strategy is a secure network. Google's network, 
carries as much as 40% of the world's internet traffic every day. In fact, Google's network is the largest of its kind on Earth, and Google has invested billions of dollars over the years to build it. Google Cloud customers are able to run their applications and services on the same infrastructure that Google uses to serve billions of users around the world. The network is truly global, operating in over 200 countries and territories with 20 regions and over 130 points of access. This means that customers benefit from a private, well-provisioned, highly reliable global network. Now, you might be considering multiple factors as part of your cloud strategy, such as cost, security, openness, and of course, the value of available products and services. Perhaps like us at Google, you're taking the environment into consideration too. By moving compute from a self-managed data center or co-location facility to Google Cloud, the net emissions directly associated with your company's compute and data storage will be zero. Why? Because Google Cloud matches 100% of the energy consumed by our global operations with renewable energy and maintains a commitment to carbon neutrality. So when you use Google Cloud to store your data and develop your applications, for example, your digital footprint is offset with clean energy, which reduces your impact on the environment. The takeaway is that every organization needs to think about their cloud strategy and understand the available options. Google Cloud provides a range of infrastructure solutions to help businesses modernize and better serve their customers. In the next video, I'll cover what those solutions are by category.